Michael Yan is back. Busy and tired man, but never too tired to tell you what craziness he's seeing wherever he is in the world. And today we're going to play Where is Michael? Where are you, Michael? I am in Amsterdam, Netherlands. I just got in from Hungary and before that, Texas and Mexico. So five days ago, I was in Mexico on the border watching people cross the Rio Grande. Uh, I was, you know, not far away from where those, how many was it? 46 died near San Antonio in yeah. the uh, container. Uh, and so what I'm doing here is in uh, Europe to look at food supply, look at migration trends because I'm a war correspondent and, uh, and that's what I do. And so that's why I'm in Netherlands right now because the farmers are very upset uh, because they are, the, the government is making concerted effort to seize the farmland of many of, of thousands of farmers. And they're doing this under the auspices of basically that nitrogen is poisonous. Can't make up this stuff. I mean, the farmers, <laughs> I mean, just imagine that. Nitrogen is suddenly poisonous, which well, is 78% of what we breathe. But anyway, go ahead. Let's go real fast, Michael. Tell tell Because last week I had a cattle rancher from the U.S. who could, was talking a lot about, you know, this, the issue with government regulation, ranching and the food system and all that stuff. And what was happening at that time is they were blocking highways in one particular area, I think even between the border of uh, the Netherlands and Germany. Now what we're seeing, and that's why I'm glad to have you here to tell me like what the truth is, is it really growing? Some of the stuff's hard to know what's true or not true, but what at least Al Jazeera is saying right now is that now farmers are blocking food warehouses and it's spread to ports and there are uh, fishermen, fishing boats, fishermen, fisherwomen, whatever you call them, fishers <laughs> uh, are po blocking ports uh, in support of the farmers. And so can you, I guess, like set the scene for us, some of the stuff that you've seen there that um, may be different from last week when it was mostly like a highway protest? Keep in mind, last week I was in Mexico, so I wasn't here. I was just watching it on the news. And so uh, now it, it's very, you know, the farmers are coming together. I think they made kind of a tactical error today. They had a lot of people come together, but they met in different places. And so they didn't achieve any mass that they thought that they would achieve in any one location. Uh, for instance, they had said that they'll close down the airport. And I thought that they could or might do it, but they didn't succeed in that. I was at the airport today. The airport basically closes itself down. You should see the airport here in Amsterdam. You don't. Let me give you a little advice. Don't come to Amsterdam right now unless you got plenty of time to waste. And to, uh, yeah, just, uh, and watch your bags. Trust me on that one. And so uh, uh, the um, farmers were out today. They started very early at, at least by 0300. I was started to monitor at 0400 local time, Amsterdam, and had my network spun up by 0400. So we were watching the networks, what they would do, and their chat groups had somebody monitoring their radio uh, chatter. They use an app called Zell, or, or, or um, uh, 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 I'm sorry, Zello. Anyway, I'm not the one monitoring. It's all in Dutch. So I've got a, a, a Dutch friend monitoring their uh, their their radio comms, and it's quite interesting. So we could see, you know, where they're going and what they're. Uh, they've got a Telegram channel. And monitoring that, of course, and then just various contacts. So we're watching what's going, watching Flight Radar 24 for where the police helicopter is orbiting, because that can give you some clues as well. And um, and so then I launched out this morning and found well, a lot of farmers. <laughs> and uh, and farmers, you know, I get along with farmers in every country in the world. I, you know, I spend more than half my life outside of the United States, and I always get along with farmers, uh, even believe it or not, even Taliban farmers. And actually, at some point in Afghanistan, I was like, why are we fighting these guys? They're just farmers. So when you've got a lot of farmers upset, you know, they're busy people. They're, they, they're people that are replete with common sense. Their cup runneth over with common sense because you don't have, crazy farmers don't last long, right? Uh, and people that don't work hard will not make it on a farm. Why are they spending this amount of time? Why are they so riled up? You need to find out and pay very close attention. So I flew to Netherlands and I was out with those guys today that you're looking on the screen, not in that specific location. Uh, but yeah. And yeah, so this is saying that this is a, this is a, uh, 
a food distribution center yeah. that they're blocking. They, I went to one food distribution center today about maybe four hours ago. And um, they were, uh, they, I, I, I found some farmers there. They weren't really blocking it. To talk with the farmers for a while. They were very happy, you know, like normal farmers. They're very happy. And even despite that they may lose their businesses that, that, you know, uh, let me let me say something very clearly. Dutch farmers may be the finest farmers in the world. They're incredible. This is a tiny country, 17 million people. They are number five exporter of food in the world, right? Think about that. 17 million people. This is a tiny country. And they're the number five food exporter in the world. That's just out over the top. That's how good they are, right? And it's good soil. It's good everything here. Good water, good weather. And so, uh, so these are very serious people. They're also business people. And so, you know, I, as you know, I do war all over the world, protest, whether it's Hong Kong or Thailand or wars, Iraq, Afghanistan, Nepal, Philippines. That's what I do, right? And so when I see people like this, it gets my attention because it's farmers. And I always pay attention to farmers. Uh, and so, yeah, here's what's happening. Bottom line. There's an information war waged against the Dutch farmers and others, but let's talk about the Dutch. That's why hey, I'm here in uh, Amsterdam now. There's an information war being waged against the Dutch farmers to, to confiscate their land. And here's the premise. Uh, they use fertilizer with nitrogen-based fertilizer and it's poisonous. Nitrogen. Yeah, nitrogen. So they sell this to the public who must have not taken many chemistry and physics classes because 78% of the atmosphere that we breathe is nitrogen, right? And it's and like the fertilizer, the plants obviously need nitrogen and, you know, potassium and phosphate, right? So, I mean, the, the fact, I mean, you just can't make up this stuff, but it's an information war. And if we, if we, if we, if we focus on talking about, Hey, that doesn't make sense. It's nitrogen. It's missing the point. The point is, this is a classic replacement strategy that Stalin did in Ukraine with the Holodomor famine. Mao did. There's a great book on the Holodomor, by the way, called Red Famine. Read it. There's a great book on, there's many great books on Mao's famine. Like one of them is called Mao's Great Famine. And you'll see the replacement strategies that they did. They, uh, they demonized farmers. For instance, Stalin demonized farmers, started labeling them kulaks. You know, it was basically like the, uh, the white supremacist label of the time. So they started calling them kulaks and blaming all the ills in the world on kulaks. And finally, kulak became just kind of a generic thing that you threw at people to, you know, like a hand grenade. And so, but the, the idea was to kulak guys, let's say here, to, 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 to label the people as kulaks and make the word kulak a very bad word uh, that evokes hatred. And, uh, and then find other people that says, hey, those... The reason that you're not getting what you need or the prices are so high is because those kulaks. You know what? We should get rid of those kulaks. They're damaging the entire society, right? We got to get rid of those guys. They're poisoning the land. They're stealing uh, your wealth. And, 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 and so what they do is uh, ultimately they get the other common man to go, wow, I can have the kulaks stuff or the Jews stuff, right? And Next thing you know, you got a genocide in your hands and a famine. And so, and, and so let me, let me finish this. So what they're doing is they are in Brussels and also here in Den Haag, they are saying that they're using nitrogen, poisonous nitrogen, which is obviously not poisonous. And uh, well, everything's poisonous if you, you know, inhale 100% of it. But, uh, but the point is, is they're saying that they're using this stuff and they need to be stopped and so that will put them all out of business next steps after that they'll be replaced the government is saying they'll confiscate their farms and it will be available for others that's what stalin did that's what mao did that's what many others have done and this sort of uh, architecture of 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 revolution is what it okay. actually is so it just a uh, uh, chat came in that i thought was interesting my grandpa's farm in Holland was taken over by the government for development back in the 60s. The farm was in our family since the days of Columbus. Um, and so, like, as you were saying, kind of, you know, the government is going to say, 
And I could show their press release from even a couple years ago saying, hey, we have incentives. We're going to buy your land. We want to reduce the amount of basically livestock on the land. Um, we'll, we'll buy out your pig farms. Um, you know, so they're, they're positioning it as if like, Hey, we're trying to help you. We're trying to just make it better as a former environmental reporter. You said it yourself, like any, anything can be, can be, um, a, a, not anything, but a lot of things I should say can become pollutants at certain levels of concentration. Um, you know, we could, we could talk about many, many things. I think the things, the farmers, seem to be feeling pressed up against a wall about is like, well, what about all the other industries that are contributing to potential issues? Um, if we're going to be held accountable and it's just about the, the so-called pollutant, then what about all these other industries? Why is it about land? Why is it about farmers? Yeah, uh, and, I, I, and they I, feel I like they're you. being, and I'm sure the government would think Michael, that you're like, you know, they're like, well, we're just trying to make things better. We're not, you know, they would, they would, they would, I'm sure, completely um, think you're, yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't want to say they think you're nuts, but maybe they would if you're like saying they're no, trying no, no. to take no, no. over the land. They, they but you know say, what I mean? They, 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 they think they, they're doing something to help, to help people. I, I don't, I, I don't know what they think because I can't read their mind, but I can tell you this. I know what they're doing and it's classic playbook, communist sort of takeover of, of land. And it has nothing to do with the pollutants. It has nothing to do with that. You can weaponize really anything, the snail darter or whatever. You know, there's this one chemical called, you know, dihydrogen monoxide. You may have heard of that before. You ever heard of di uh, dihydrogen monoxide? You yes, but I'm not super yeah. familiar with what it does. <laughs> well, it's very, it's very poisonous. It, it kills people all the time. Every, the farmers spread this all over their fields every day or not every day, but almost daily. It's a, it, all over the world. This is, this stuff is used. People use it in their households. It kills kids all the time. And you know, dihydrogen monoxide is a very, very deadly chemical. And you know, they shouldn't be allowed to use that, right? I mean, would you agree? That, you know, when when this this stuff is killing people, they shouldn't be allowed to use it. Well, dihydrogen monoxide is water. That's just the name for water, right? Two hydrogens, one oxygen, right? So, I mean, you can just say this and people will buy off on it, right? I mean, you know, it's very dangerous. Dihydrogen monoxide, die. okay. Right, yeah. And so, I mean, but people will just buy off on that and go, wow, we got to do something about this dihydrogen oh, monoxide. You know, it's like, yeah, okay, whatever. Nitrogen is not a problem, but that's not the problem. If we're talking about that, we're losing, right? We're losing. The, <laughs> th this is a hostile takeover, right? This is a hostile takeover. So what they do, and this is not the first time it's happened, it's, it ha it happens, it's just a playbook sort of a thing. Uh, they'll, they'll demonize the farmers and they're going to take their land, right? And once they take their land, now let's look at the next steps. This consolidates the food production, right? Crickets, literal crickets. You know, so the next thing you know, you're eating cricket meatballs, right? Uh, because... The one thing that authoritarians want to control above all else is food. If they control the food, they control the people, right? So what you've got to do is wipe out all these highly skilled farmers who are also business people, all of them. And that's your resilience. That's why the French guard their little the farmers like this. Those farmers are vital to your independence and your sovereignty. Those farmers out there that I was with today that you're showing on your screen are absolutely vital to Dutch sovereignty. And, and uh, uh, small farmers like that get hit in the United States all the time with various things, whether it's the EPA or 1942, Wickard versus Filburn, if you know what I'm talking about on that. Wickard versus Filburn should be overthrown. It should be tossed right out the window. It should have never, uh, uh, Wickard versus Filburn is another subject. But the bottom line is, is when you, this is a replacement strategy to gain control of the food supply. This is not conspiracy theory. This is me reading more books than most college professors ever read. Because, you know, when I'm watching the border down in Mexico, the last two weeks watching people cross the border, I'm just reading books. You know, I've been doing this for years all across the world. When I'm, when I, I, I'm studying and I'm out with the, the best people in the world that know their topics well, and I, I know how this works. This is a replacement strategy, has nothing to do with nitrogen, has nothing to do with poison. 
many of the of the government people i can't read their minds i'm not a mind reader they may think that they're doing the best thing if they think that they're helping they're actually stupid dupes themselves right because they're not and keep in mind most of the people are are useful idiots in this regard uh when stalin did the replacement in ukraine and useful idiots is the actual term that they often use that's not me making it up that's an actual term that was born long before we were born before our grandparents were born what the what stalin did in holodomor in ukraine was uh well use the useful idiots to take the land from the farmers the kulaks right and then once you take that land you kill the useful idiots and now you've got the land you consolidate it and you've got control of the population that's what this is this has nothing to do with you know the environment uh it's okay so it's funny when you were bringing up dihydrogen monoxide i'm like i know i've heard of that i know i've heard that because i was not translating in my head and it's because it's so funny you're right i knew i had heard about like you know this the the controversy because it's because the fact checkers actually jumped on this this is a snopes article where they're like actually fact checking what you just said saying that there's a hoax going around that shows even the most innocuous substances can be made to sound like a dangerous threat to human life and i guess i don't know there was it must have been enough attention around it you know they're like false it's just water it's i love it i love the stuff that snopes decides to jump on um okay so you know what's funny though is that that's nothing new i learned about that since i was a kid uh, since i was about nine or ten i fell in love with chemistry and physics especially physics right I, so my i problem remember was re- I was shooting I, videos in my chemistry class of my of my co you know my peers doing you know stuff like cheating and or or just you know making oh, really? out in the back oh, or whatever i just yeah. i just went around with my camera and shot videos so i didn't do very well in chemistry <laughs> oh my gosh but but that i what i was getting to that's classic. You were like a journalist <laughs> back then. So I mean, <laughs> that's funny. So the, um, but, but the, uh, that story I heard when I was a young teenager, because the first time I heard it, I was like, oh, so it taught me a lesson that I've always stuck with me. Like, you know, how quickly something can be made to sound so dangerous. You just put it into that system of look how dangerous it is. It's in it. Oh. We lost Michael. Michael, come back. <laughs> oh, we lost you for a second. I, I'm here. Okay. And, uh, hey, what okay. happened with the Freedom Tubs? Um, I'm seeing that they're bringing in jacuzzis for the distribution center blockade. Are they? I didn't see those. I would have jumped it in says. <laughs> it says Freedom Tubs. Dutch farmers bring hot tub to distribution center blockade. That must be a Dutch yes. thing, you know. Dutch I don't know what the, we do have. Yeah. Um, a local correspondent, Meh, here who he's in. Uh, also in Holland, but he's a local. He's a he's Dutch, and I think it's a he. I don't know. It could be a she. Meh, Meh seems like a, a a binary name. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but um, maybe you could tell us if the hot tubs are real and what this says. Uh, I know I this is a protest. This. Maybe I'll see him tomorrow. Actually, I got to do a bunch of interviews tomorrow, so I might, and I'm injured, so I might. So I had to come back a little early today. So I mean, um, uh, so I, I may go out with a driver tomorrow and just kind of sit in the car and not. Go, I got somebody going to get me crutches, actually, so I might be able to yeah. limp around out there because I, I really want to talk with as many farmers as possible. Uh, the 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 I didn't see any hot tubs today, but you know, maybe that's what you need for your foot. I know it. I need celebrity hot tub. You know, I remember that from Saturday Night Live or something. <laughs> um, so, okay. So yeah, this is, I guess, more video of one of those distribution centers. So when you're saying you were there, they weren't, they were just hanging out. They weren't necessarily blocking. Um, what, what I'm not, I don't know if I was there, Allison, I, because they were all over the place. They were in many different places. Right. So, I mean, like we're, I'm looking at the, the map and, and we can see, you know, populating places where they're at and they're moving around all the time Uh so i might say hey they're here right now and then you know then they're like hey let's go and then they move somewhere okay i want to i want to ask you about this too because i saw this headline and i thought it was a little odd i think this this is news in tehran um but dutch farmers continue violent protests against limiting nitrogen oxide emissions and the other it's the other question too i had was like it seems a little unclear maybe somebody in the chat who's there too can clarify this for me because i don't speak the language but is it 
is it emissions from the cows? Is it emissions from the tractors, you know, from diesel engines? What that, that's not, that, that, nitrogen that, and ammonia. This is the thing. Don't even talk about that. It's not it has nothing to do with that. Zero. And if you start arguing that, the enemies, and these are true enemies, these are lethal enemies, they are winning. So that's how it, I, I study information war. I've written three books on information war. Unfortunately, they're all in Japanese because I've been trying to wake up Japanese for years and for various reasons. It's very important. But bottom line is when you start talking about, well, is it really poisonous or is it not? They, they're winning. They're kicking your butt. The, the main thing is, is identify that this is an information war and go right for the perpetrator. You know, when you're in, in a, a situation where there's all kinds of arson going on, and all you're doing is putting out fires all the time. And like, here, you know, here we go, putting out another fire. No, you got to stop putting out fires and find the arson, arsonist and put out that arsonist. You know, it's the same way with snipers that we got hit with all the time in the wars. You know, if we sit there and go, wow, well, you know, sniper got another one. That's too bad. You know, no, we go hunt the sniper and kill him, right? That's the thing that's happening here. People keep arguing about this and that and the other. Well, no, it doesn't really do this or the, oh, blah, blah, blah. Klaus Schwab, Bill Gates, right? Soros, these guys, they are lethal enemies. Let's call it what it is. We're going into famines that are going to be the biggest famines in all of human history. Nobody watching this, nobody's grandparents who are watching this has ever seen the level of famines that are unfolding now. This is going to be massive. And the math is just going that direction. The conditions are set. Now we've got the Ukraine war going. I was warning about that last year from Lithuania when I was tracking migrants through Lithuania. I was doing the same down in Morocco and Greece. I'm watching this. My finger's on the pulse. I'm constantly out here. I see what's going on. I know what's going on. We're going into the biggest events that anybody watching it. I don't care how many wars you've been into or anything else. You haven't seen anything like what's coming, right? And knocking out these farmers and in uh, Netherlands and knocking them out in New Zealand and uh, and uh, United States and, uh, you know, uh, uh, Canada and so many other places. You know, look, I just left Panama recently as well. Darien Gap, tracking migrants. It's, it's very important. I don't know if you know what Darien Gap is, but there, there's a, a, a little corridor between Colombia and Panama where massive amounts of migrants are going through. It's an extremely dangerous jungle. And so I took two congressmen out there. I took uh, Burgess Owens and Tom Tiffany deep into that jungle, which I, I was surprised they went out there with me. It's quite dangerous. The Indians uh, kill migrants seven days a week. I mean, they shoot them, rape them, murder them. The migrants fall off of one of the mountains called the Montaña de la Muerta, the mountain of death. They're drowning all the time. Snakes. It's unbelievable. About 10 percent die. Right. 10 percent. Think about that. That's wartime level stuff. Right. And so let me get where I'm going with this. That is a corridor to the United States that has been set up. I was there when Mayorkas landed in his Blackhawks about three months ago. I heard that he was coming. I got into the right location and his Blackhawks landed right in front of me down in Darien province in Panama. He's Mayorkas. The United States government is expanding the, the corridor down from in, between Colombia and Panama up to the United States. Why is this important? And why do I spend so much time out with those Indians? I'll tell you why. Because as these famines hit, this is all part of a bigger picture, right? As these famines start to unfold, Africa, Asia, and South America are falling like gigantic dominoes. And that creates hop. Hop is human osmotic pressure, the push and pull of migration. And so as you have these famines, and remember, famine creates famine, like fire creates fire. The more famine you've got, the more famine you get for a while. And then it reaches an equilibrium and goes away. And people say, we'll never do that again. And then they do it again. So that creates this osmotic pressure that will push people and pull people through the Darien Gap, through, through Colombia. I've tracked the route, right? Uh, I've spent six months down there with the Indians that are killing so many people. It's unbelievable. And so... They take them up to Costa Rica in a program called Controlled Flow that our government so cleverly set up. So we're actually helping this hop, this human osmotic pressure through the Darien Gap up to Costa Rica, 
Nicaragua comes next. Honduras, Guatemala, Tapachula, Mexico. I've been to it, I've tracked this thing. Then they come across up in various places in Mexico, Arizona, New Mexico, and California, right? And then they end up all over the United States. That's right. So what I'm getting to with all this stuff, the food, the information war, the migration, this is all part of something bigger. These are not separate from each other. Look at the big picture. This is a big game. This is not conspiracy theory. This is straight up what's happening. We are being, we are being invaded. Europe has been invaded. Uh, and this is a classic strategy, for instance, that Stalin used uh, with Ukraine. Read the book Red Famine. Read the book Red Famine and look around you right now. Read the book, uh, you know, uh, Mao's Great Famine and look around you right now. And you'll see this is classical strategy. Has nothing to do with nitrous oxide. I don't even want to hear about it. Right? I don't want to hear <laughs> about how much is this and how much is there. It has nothing to do with that. This is war. Okay. Um, speaking of, if you have not gone over and signed up on my locals community you're really missing out, um, alisonmorrow.locals.com, where you would have seen a, uh, well, I'm going to go back to the, the comment. You would have gotten some training from my husband, who is a uh, was a sniper in the Marine Corps. Uh, Michael talking, I don't know, I, I would have to go back to what you were saying about killing snipers. I don't remember. Somebody said wrong channel to mention that on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. um anyway we did yeah we well, did fire just tell him i've been in a lot of situations where we were taking incoming and outgoing sniper fire that was effective in both directions i spent years in combat um okay so yeah so go over to locals and sign up and become part of my editorial board i even had oh yeah here we go thank you sure loved lynn's training yesterday so go go you get all this exclusive content why aren't you on uh, alisonmorrow.locals.com yet? The other place uh, you should go is to one of my sponsors and uh, go get yourself some wine. You know what? Go buy Michael some wine. If there's anybody in this world right now who needs a nice glass of wine, it's Michael Yan. So go to Allison. Wine Michael Yan doesn't drink. Oh, he doesn't drink. All right. Well, buy yourself drink, some and wine and drink in his honor. For ibuprofen. What's that? I said they should just drink for you since you can't drink. Yeah. Um, I'm the only one that doesn't drink. <laughs> it's very odd. But uh, yeah, somebody said you're a spy. I'm starting to wonder maybe that's possible if you don't drink. But we'll, I'll, I'll let you re you're gonna respond to that in a minute. Hang on, hang on, hang on before you go to that. Okay, so you get 50% off my favorite wines, 50% off shipping. So it's a great deal. It's already obviously July 4th. So you're not going to have it in time for grilling. Oh. Uh, but there's going to be another holiday in the near future. And Maybe this will be all you'll have left. It sounds like Michael thinks things are going to get pretty dire. So the only thing you may have left is AllisonOnePromo.com. So you should get it and stock up while you can. Or you can go to TwinEngineCoffee.com slash Allison, get some USDA certified uh, organic Nicaraguan roast. There's light roast, dark roast. I'm a big fan of the cigar number one, which is right here. It's dark roast. Uh, I'm actually drinking it right now. So uh, I, I do promote the sponsors that I uh, also... Uh, consume. There's a, a Katura tea. If you're a tea drinker, go get some tea made out of the coffee fruit. I cold brew mine for 24 hours. It tastes like black tea. It's very good. So um, twinengineoffee.com, uh, Allison Morrow, or sorry, AllisonWinePromo.com, and you can support my work and get some good coffee and good wine uh, as the end of the world draws near. Okay. So um, Michael, real fast too, can we go to the, just want to bring up this video that was going around on um, bit shoot of the ships in the harbor because uh I, I don't know i mean they're saying that this is a block of major ports i mean maybe it is it doesn't look like there's hundreds of ships out there but you tell me what what's the i'm looking at it on a, i'm looking at it on a bigger screen uh, uh, here that's why i'm looking over here um I looked down to the harbor today, and then as soon as we got there, we realized they were doing a press conference, and uh, and so we we punched back, and we didn't go out with any ships. I, I was just literally around there about I don't know two and a half hours, or, yeah, roughly two and a half hour. Two or, anyway, it doesn't matter. I was just over there, but we did not go out with and and, and audit that or talk with the fishermen. Maybe we'll do it tomorrow. I've got to get some crutches, actually. That's why I had to punch back. I got hurt in Mexico. So Jeff Fidley saying funny. breaking news, mass shooting, Highland Park, Illinois, five dead, 16 injured. I'll look it up while you're talking. Let's let's look yeah. that up. Yeah. I, you know, 
we're we're that's that's terrible. I mean, and things like that are going to continue to happen. But we're talking about something that's a mat. You know, as a war correspondent, you know, shootouts and all that stuff is something that's just like. I'm not going to get diverted by that. That's terrible. I mean, whatever happened. But at the same time, we're looking at mass famines and war and uh, pandemic that always goes with famine. These things go together. Pandemic, famine, war. Pandemic, famine, war. Pan for war, right? If you get a big famine, you'll always get pandemic and war. If you get a big pandemic, you get the other two. And if you get... Uh, uh, war, you'll get the other two. And and what we're looking at is the massive migration that will come from that stuff. And, uh, and we're looking at something where, I mean, literally a billion people may be dead in, by 2025, a billion with a B. That's the way it's shaping up. Nothing like this has ever happened in human history. So, you know, stuff like this is terrible, but I, I'm not, I don't have time to get diverted by it. Uh, you know, um, it's just the way it is. Uh, well, just so that people know what what they're reporting here is that five people were killed and 16 injured uh, along the parade route. Uh, and they're still yeah. looking for the shooter. So not yeah. sure what's going on there. But anyway. Um, OK, so uh, let's go back to the. Yeah. So you were talking about the um, the sh the ships and I'll bring those back up. Sorry, I'm trying to find the right. I have so much. Oh, those are the hot tubs. <laughs> I can't find, maybe I, I scrolled out of it. So we'll go back to the distribution centers. Um, what do you hear people say, you know, listen, we're just Dutch citizens getting caught in the middle of all of this. And, and I guess what's the opposition say? Not, not the government, not the government, but like the Dutch citizen who's just like, I wish these farmers would just stop. You know, I, I like we're getting caught in the middle or maybe they're overreacting or we do have a problem. Like, Give me the counterpoints. Are, are you hearing anything like that? Uh, I'm just curious what what other people are saying that may not be aligned with what you're saying or what the farmers are saying. Most people don't seem to track on it. Uh, you know, they don't seem to realize how vital this is, right? They don't realize that knocking out these small farmers, thousands of them, is a matter of national security. It's a matter of food security, which is a matter of national security, to put it lightly. Uh, and uh, but th most people don't get it. They don't understand the dynamic. They don't understand what's happening. They'll just fall for the nitrous oxide BS. They'll go for that and they'll start arguing about that and they'll start looking up articles and they'll start arguing about, well, blah, 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 blah. Listen, that's an information decoy. That's chaff. You're going to your missile is going to follow the chaff and they're going to shoot you down. Right. I mean, this is what's happening. I mean, they, they are uh, this is a, 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 a an incredible information campaign. Uh, let me, let me mention one book that everybody should read called Rape of the Mind, Rape of the Mind, 1956 book, excellent book. I tell every journalist I meet, read Rape of the Mind. There's your vaccination against ment menticide and mind control. It's actually written in 1956 by a Dutch psychologist named Mirlu, just Mirlu. Just read it. Rape of the Mind. You read that book and read Red Famine and read and you see what how these things conflate and you can start to understand what's happening, right? If you had people who had read, read, or let's say uh, rape of the mind before the pandemic wouldn't have fallen for most of what they've met so many millions of people have just fallen for, right? There's a lot of people that are about to fall right now because of mistakes they made in the pandemic. And we know why I won't mention it, but we know what it is, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, be careful. And so the bottom line, right the now. bottom line is, the bottom line is the fact that we can't even talk about it is a massive red flag. That's that's a that's a validation that we're in a very intense information war that's in an advanced stage, and it's still growing, right? And so, uh, taking control of the information uh, waves, right? That's a vital in, in this sort of warfare. Taking control of the food right? Taking control of the weapons, taking control. First, they need to control your mouth, which is what they're doing. We can't even say it. We can't even say it when we know what's happening, right? But we can't say it. And so uh, that that's the environment we're in. While they're trying to take these farmers' land, it has nothing to do with these chemicals. That's idiotic. It's only about consolidating and taking control 
of the food supply. And then we'll be eating crickets, right? Cricket meatballs or whatever. Then they can put whatever they want in those crickets. What's the magic formula in that in that can, right? We don't know. They can start throwing anything they want in there. We already see uh, some very bad outcomes from from the from the serious information wars that have been unfolding since January of 20. That's not when it started, but it really got intense in January of 2020. And by the way, in January of 2020, if you look on my, I didn't have locals back then, but if you look on my Patreon and my website. I started very specifically warning in January of 2020 to stock up on food. I started warning because study of war is what I do, right? And when you have a pan, a, a big pandemic, you will always have famine. Eventually, it may sh uh, flash the bang, may be uh, measured in might be measured in weeks, uh, and it can be measured in months or years. And famines come in different forms. Uh, some are like light switch, like here in Netherlands. There was a famine in 1944 and 45. It only lasted, what, roughly six months, right? The uh, hunger winter is what they call it, the hunger, the, hung, the hunger winter. And it was a that was like a light switch famine. And it was caused by the Nazis. Uh, the, the Dutch didn't want to surrender to the Nazis. They weren't going to go down like that. And so the, the Nazis put the Dutch into a famine situation. They had a bad winter. And uh, they were down to cannibalism and all sorts of things right here in Amsterdam, where I'm at now. So, I mean, and this is a highly advanced country. And then there's other sorts of there's another sort of famine that you just sort of gradually come that. By the way, the hunger venter, they sort of suddenly went into it and suddenly came out of it. I think it came out of it in about May of 1945. Right. Is that right? Or is it? Yeah. But I think it was about May. In any case, when, when we beat the Nazis back, suddenly they had plenty of food. Right. Now there's another type of famine, which is the type we're going into now. It's a very gradual entry. And then it can go, usually famines don't last for more than about two years, but some of them will last a lot longer, seven, 10 years, or even more. That's what we're going into now. We're going into a gradual entry uh, and it's clearly gonna last more than two years. So you either prepare or you don't. Um. Ah, a conspiracy channel. <laughs> yeah. Tell them to go somewhere I'm else. I'm guessing What's your you channel? get called out a lot. And I listen, I'm that. just here to learn. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what's going to happen in the next year or two, though I do hope housing prices come down because we would like to buy property at some point and they're totally unaffordable. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's going to get as bad as you say. I have. I, I do think things are going to get tough for people, but I, I don't I don't know if it's going to get that bad. Do you get this, uh, that you're a conspiracy theorist, Michael? No, not by people no? that know me. That's why, that's why I've met privately with three directors of CIA, just me and them. Now you they're going to think you're CIA. I'm not. I never have been. But if you look up my war work, you'll see that I was extremely accurate on Iraq and Afghanistan and Thailand and Hong Kong because I was physically there. Uh, you know, I spent four years in combat in Iraq and Afghanistan and out with the Taliban and everybody else. And and uh, what happened with uh, look up, look up my name and Stanley McChrystal and you'll see the things that that I, that I wrote. Uh, or look up my name and Michael Yon's war in the Atlantic or what the New York Times wrote about me. Um, I've been extremely accurate, right? And why am I so accurate? Because this is what I do like Rain Man, seven days a week. I don't go to concerts. I don't drink alcohol. I don't take drugs except for this ibuprofen I might take. I'm judging whether or not I'm going to take it for my foot that's badly damaged. All I do is study and go see things. I go to the wars. I go to the conflicts. I go talk with top intelligence people, military, truckers. Recently, I drove all the way across the United States with the truckers convoy, jumping truck to truck. I spent like two weeks going with the truckers. And now I'm out with farmers because I spend, I always, no matter what country I go to, I go straight to the farmers. Uh, the farmers are, have, are a vital pulse where I, where I find uh, a lot of important information. So this is what I do. And uh, I've been extremely accurate on the, on the, uh, I was there at January 6th, coincidence, you know, I was right there. Why did I happen to get that right? You know what I mean? Out of all places on earth, because I watch, I'm constantly watching these things. The next day after the inauguration, I flew straight to El Paso to the border because I thought that we were going to start getting overwhelmed with, with illegal aliens. And I'm not going to call them migrants. They're illegal aliens. And we did start getting overrun immediately within 24 hours, right? Don't give any words to the to the mind melders. The mind melders trying to take your words away. Oh, you can't call them illegal aliens. 
they're my, no, they're illegal aliens. I'm not going to give you that word, right? That's how the, the, the menticide works. The rape of the mind, the, 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 the brainwashing is you, they put, make words off limits. Like we can't even say the thing that's killing so many people and clearly hitting uh, fertility. We can't even say that. They're still yeah, they're, be they're, careful. We're live on I'm, YouTube. I'm not going to say it, but the fact that that's even difficult tells you everything that you need to know about the beast and the cult that we're up against. <clears throat> and anyway, um, so the bottom line is they got to take out these farmers. They got to take out these farmers. They got to take out the farmers here. They got to take them out in Germany. It's going to be hard for them in France. Uh, you know, they, they got to take out as many of them as they can. Take out I these farmers, take their land, consolidate uh, the food uh, supply chains, and uh, and 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 then that's a huge uh, and people that think this are, is a conspiracy theory are I would say highly uneducated actually uh, because if you if you if you've studied enough about what's happening the fact that you're getting punched every day for the last two years two and a half years if you haven't wisened up yet to what's happening mm -hmm. I mean you're just a punching bag you know you well, just said oh here they come again I got to lock down again because they say so you know it's Michael like, I think. That I, th I think the place where I probably disagree with you is not necessarily on on efforts to socially engineer what what the food system and anything else is going to look like. Like I would totally be on be on your side when it comes to people like Bill Gates uh, working tirelessly to engineer society to their liking. I think where I disagree is that that just given my my background in corporate news, yeah. knowing how how the culture is in there it's it is very much like a savior complex like we're doing the public a good that even though they don't see it we just have to do it and i i think it, probably there are many historical events that you've already named where lots of the people who participated in that in those atrocities thought they were doing something that just had a higher purpose like when i had the guys on that redid the milgram experiments which people, if you're not familiar with, like very briefly, hopefully I don't botch this. I mean, the idea was to see how, you know, how far people would go inflicting suffering on their fellow humans through the shocking experiment, you know, basically like giving these shocks um, in the name of authority. But it, but what these guys found was that it wasn't an authority thing. It was believing in what the authority's message was, believing that the message was a higher purpose than the pain and that they just had to push through it. And I think a lot of these, like they, the reason they would think you're totally nuts by talking about like land grabs and, you know, they want to do this and they just, it's just all about control. And blah, blah, is that I don't think a, a lot of those who would be at this higher echelon of control are, are going to bed at night thinking like we're trying to take over the world. I think, I think these are often messages. I, I don't know what they're, they're thinking, Allison. I don't well, know I, what think they're I, 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 I think they're I'm true believers. I mean, I think I'm not trying to read, I'm not trying to read their mind. Particular direction. I, 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 I'm not try, I, I don't know what they're thinking uh, and, and, and I'm not trying to read their mind, but I know the playbook that they're playing by. And some of them will be true believers. We know, we don't know who they are, who are the true, is Trudeau, is Trudeau a, a true believer, for instance, he's clearly a shill. He's clearly a puppet like Zelensky. Uh, you know, yeah, I mean, I think these low level puppets. Yeah, I, I just think, you know, I, I think there are more stormtroopers than there are Darth Vader's. That's just the way I look at it. And I just wanted to bring this up that this article is from 2020. So, you know, this issue has gone back several years. This has been like a, you know, the farmers have been protesting and this has been building like it's making the news right now. Not a lot of news outlets, but it's been making headlines right now. But it's been going on for quite a while. Now it's become so vital, though, because we see. We're going into famine. <laughs> We're going into famine. It's funny how, you know, like I just read a book by Peter Zan, finished it uh, a few days ago, a week ago or so, when I was in Mexico. And uh, do you, have you heard of Peter Zan, He's a geo uh, 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 political strategist or something, or analyst mm -hmm. and a demographer, right? And, uh, you know, he, he mentioned that, you know, the United States, uh, the food supply is a non-issue. Basically, we're highly secure and you're never going to have to face any food problems, which is utter nonsense. He clearly hasn't studied famine. He clearly hasn't studied the dynamics behind the, any of these sorts of things. Uh, the, 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 fact, uh, the, the fact that we're clearly going into famine when we clearly should not be. The United States, whether or not the United States will go into a famine, I don't know. But the fact that 
but at this point, I would give it probably greater than 50% chance, which is stunning for me to say. You know, I mean, if you would have asked me that three years ago, uh, you know, I would have said the United States going to a famine. Uh, yeah, maybe I can see where it could happen with an asteroid strike or, you know, an EMP takes out the grid, you know, something like that, certainly. Uh, but uh, because we've got, you know, a lot of people now to feed and, 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 and we depend on many systems that, uh, you know, require, you know, things that could, that are vulnerable. Uh, but we do have great farms and huge amounts of farmland. We also have droughts. We also have Lake Powell and Lake Mead drying up. We have California, large parts of it drying up Texas. I was just down in Texas. We, ha we have a lot of issues. Uh, we still produce, we have fuel going through the roof, as we know. We were fuel independent until just a few years ago. Something happened. Uh, you know, what was that? And so the bottom line is we are not invincible. The United States is not invincible. Nobody is. Rome was not, right? We have to look at this with realistic eyes that we are under attack. That's very obvious. Uh, some people will call that conspiracy theory. I'll tell them to hit the road. I don't have time for you. You know, I spend my time in wars, so many wars you wouldn't believe. I can't even remember them all, it seems like. You know, I have to sit down and audit in my head. It all They always look like conspiracy theories until you're out there. And then you see, oh, here they go. They're doing this crazy stuff again. They're doing stuff that they should never do. Like, for instance, put more troops into, I was just in Hungary a couple of days ago. Why, why, why are we deploying more troops into places like Poland and Lithuania? And I lived in Poland for two years, by the way. And why are, why are we deploying troops over here now and provoking what could turn into a nuclear war, an actual nuclear war? This is not conspiracy theory. It's all about conditions. Amateurs always talk about sparks. Amateurs are always like, what will the spark be? You know, well, well, that's an amateur question because professionals never talk about sparks. They're always talking about conditions, right? When the conditions are set, when the forest is dry, the spark will come. There's always sparks, right? I would but know. I would know a lot more about wildfire right now, Michael, if I weren't fired uh, from my job at the Department of Natural Resources for talking to yeah. people like you. <laughs> so, yeah, sorry. I mean, the thing is, is it's all about conditions. When people don't don't take care of their forest, don't manage their forest, and they set those conditions, it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when. When's it going to happen? I don't know. How's it okay. going to happen? Beats me. But it's going to happen. This is, thank you for the super chat. And yes, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. I mean, totally. That's kind of, I just, that's the way I see a lot of these, these folks. But I mean, the only reason I, I guess. I don't think it, that they're always good intentions. I mean, the people that are executing them may have good intentions. For instance, when our soldiers are put into ridiculous situations, I was a soldier and I've been out with soldiers in combat quite a lot as a war correspondent, as an analyst, right? They don't go in there with bad intentions. Most of our soldiers are quite honorable people especially when you get out there with the actual combat troops. I love going out with combat troops. I miss it actually. And, but I mean, I don't miss the war so much, but I, I just like those kind of people, but their whereas their intentions may be honorable and, and their behavior may be, you know, incredibly good. The people who are commanding them, <laughs> that's another story. So, yeah. And so I can't read the minds of the people that are executing these policies and trying to take these farmers land. Uh, but that's what they're going for. And I know what the overall strategy is because WEF, the Davos crowd, they don't even, they say it with their mouths. They write it in words. You can read their words. You can watch the videos of them saying they're, they, they're, they're you know, if you talked about, you know, global depopulation plan two years ago, people would say, what? That's a conspiracy theory. It's like they say it with their mouths. And then people would say, well, they, there's no possibility they could possibly do that. And I'm like, you lack well, imagination. We, I did just see that and we're they down. I did, <laughs> What's that? I did see that the numbers are showing we're we're down below for like multiple years in a row, uh, below sustainability, at least in the United States, like the number of kids that people are having. Um, right. So for, for the population to say, okay, before we go, um, I, I somebody was bringing this up, so I just wanted to look at it. Uh, statement by President Biden on pandemic preparedness, prevention, and response fund at the World Bank. 
Today, the World Bank Board voted to approve the establishment of a new financial intermediary fund that will make the world safer and more secure from pandemics. Since day one of my administration, I have called for a mechanism to catalyze global progress to prevent, detect, and respond to infectious disease threats. The United States is going to do its or is doing its part to collectively and collaboratively build global consensus towards establishing this new fund through calls to action and partnership from leaders across our government. Strong and relentless leadership from our allies and partners has brought us to this significant milestone, including, I skipped over, but Indonesia G20 presidency in 2020, Italian, Italy G20 presidency 2021. Infectious diseases that cross borders, cause death, and disrupt societies and economies are a threat to national and global security. Over 1 million Americans and millions more around the world have died from COVID-19. Economies and societies have been devastated in its wake. And studies suggest the risk of another pandemic is significant. When it comes to preparing for the next pandemic, the cost of inaction is greater than the cost of action. Investing in preparedness now is the right thing and the smart thing. So we're going to pledge $400 million to this um, to support the fund. And uh, we're commitments totaling nearly $1.1 billion have been made by the United States, European Commission, Germany, Indonesia. What, what, what's the, what do you think the point of all this is? this fund for pandemic preparedness. Well, any ideas? Yeah. Uh, two ideas jumped to my mind. One is just theft. And another is, uh, yeah, there'll be more pandemics. Uh, they don't, they don't mince words about it. You know, I mean, we know there'll be more pandemics, by the way, I've read 60 books on pandemic, 60, six, zero, five dozen, right? I'd read 40 before this pandemic and 20 during the first year, right? Uh, and because as a war correspondent, I have to study famine, pandemic, and war, and information war, right? And migration. These are things, this is my jungle, right? W kinetic war, which I spent years in with the shootouts and all that, the, you know, high school level war, basically. And then the other uh, higher levels of war, which is inf the highest level of warfare is information warfare. That's your PhD level, right? And that's where most of the people, 99% of the population at a minimum, is naive to what's happening to them. They don't know. That's why I mentioned earlier the book, Rape of the Mind. Read it. Read the book, Rape of the Mind. If, if, if you don't remember anything else from this, stop what you're doing, buy that book, and read it slowly. Rape of the Mind, 1956, Dutch psychologist. And then you will see a lot of that. There's your vaccine, Rape of the Mind. You'll be very resilient after you're more resilient than you were before uh, for brainwashing. Everybody can be brainwashed. And so you have to be, you have to, you know, it's like, it's a martial art, right? But you can learn, you can learn. And when you read that book, stop, don't go around brainwashing everybody. But I mean, but I, I mean, you could, you can actually develop the, the, the tool set to do it. It's highly doable, right? It's done to people every day. It's done to Americans and the, the mass psychosis is incredible, uh, you know, and uh, and it's been going on since forever. It's just, you know, back in the old days when ships would sail at sea for months at a time with sails and all that, cults would just spontaneously form on these ships. You know, you'd have just a cult form out at sea based on, who knows, glowing jellyfish or something. You know, by the time SpaceX goes to Mars, uh, it won't be long until somebody up on Mars, if, if hopefully it goes that far, uh, you know, we'll start a cult. You know, the only cult you'll never see is the one you're in, by the way. You'll never see the cult that you're in. That's a good quote. I like that. Um, well, could, could OK, well, let me ask you this. Then to play devil's advocate, are we in a cult? I mean, are you in a cult? Are we like this? I, You know, the whole like fear, afraid of pandemic, pan for wars, like, uh, you know, it's going to be terrible. Is that a cult? Um you know, just curious, because how, how do you know you're not in one and you don't see you don't you're just not missing it? First, I mean, I mean if, if, if it's truthful that the, the only call you'll never see is the one you're in, I wouldn't see it. You know, so, uh, so <laughs> maybe. And I will say this. Uh, we're surrounded by cults. And they're not all evil. I mean, cults given a bad connotation. There's, you know, basically fitness cults at times, you know, uh, but, uh, but, you know, what do they do? Make people fit. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but what is a cult? First, you have to define that, right? And that can, you can really get into some arguments with that because, you know, somebody would want to gerrymander that definition to make sure that their religion is not considered a cult, right? 
what is a cult? I mean, you'd have to assign definitions to it. I would say one is you're not allowed to leave. <laughs> you're not allowed to question it, right? Do not, you should not question this thing. You should not mention certain words. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, and, uh, and you have to, they control your diet. They'll control your habits. They'll control, uh, 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 there's a, there, there's a lot of things. I, I infiltrated a cult actually at one at one point years ago and lived with them for a while in California when I was studying cults. You know, when I was in special forces uh, back, it, it was different back then. Uh, the, the old timers talked about communism a lot because we studied communism a lot. I, what I trained to do when I was a Green Beret was to parachute into Poland and kill Soviets actually near a town called Bialystok. We never did it, but I spent three years training to do that mission. It was a lot of training. And, and then I lived in Poland after the army. It's quite interesting. Went to language schools for Polish and German and the whole works, right? So, I mean, so I learned about communism, learned quite a lot. And, uh, and, I, and you know, and I was taught early on that communism is a cult. And I'm like, well, what's a cult? It's a bad thing, right? Well, what actually is that? So, you know, over the years, I read a lot of books on cults and, you know, I wasn't fascinated. I was more fascinated with physics, but, uh, and still I am. Uh, but uh, uh, but then once you realize I'm I'm actually surrounded by cults. Uh, there's there's they're constantly emerging. Uh, they're constantly some last for a long time, and then you know very quickly you go, what's the difference between a cult and a religion? You know, anyway, not to go into that, but they are everywhere. And if you know what you're doing, you can create. I could create a cult if 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 I were. Uh, you know, with, with, uh, with the knowledge that I have in my head, I could easily form a cult because it's formulaic, right? Obviously, I don't have a cult. I haven't tried to do that. I'm, I'm too busy doing other things. At, at one point, I thought I was joking with some friends. I should just start a cult to prove to you that I can do it. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. anybody can do it. Anybody can start a cult if you know what you're doing. Anybody can build a house if they know what they're doing, right? This isn't a special dark art dark art stuff it's stuff that you can learn like skateboarding you know uh yeah and so there's cults everywhere okay last 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 final final thing that that was in the news um not too long ago so i guess there was a little bit of controversy over this purchase bill gates purchase of north dakota farmland and um i i think from what i understand so well they're saying that he has quietly amassed nearly 270,000 acres of farmland across the country. Considered the largest private owner of farmland in the country with some 269,000 acres across dozens of states. And um, this trustee of Red River Trust is Peter Headley, identifies himself on his LinkedIn page as head of agriculture investment management at this investment management company. Uh, claimed that Headley once headed an entity called Cottonwood, which was described as an ag investment platform for Bill and Melinda Gates. Earlier this week, North Dakota State Attorney General Drew Wrigley wrote a letter to Red River Trust notifying it that corporations and limited liability companies were prohibited from owning or leasing farmland or ranch land in the state of North Dakota, that these entities were also barred from engaging in farming or ranching. In addition, the law places certain limitations on the ability of trust to own farmland or ranch land. But I think I think they ended up getting the, making the sale. So I don't know, just, just shows that they, they are moving in the direction of uh, <laughs> that we were talking about, at least with with the Gates Foundation and whatnot. And one of the like the rancher that I had last night was talking about how one of, you know, the more protected areas, I guess you would have like from a legal standpoint, if somebody once you end up with land that's in like a trust, it's it's much more protected than if it just stays like private land. And so then it's it's in like a new special category where you're unlikely at least to get it back. I don't know. Well, That's what he said. Yeah. Uh, interesting. I mean, he he does like to buy his farmland. Why? Because he's a, he's a smart guy. I mean, he's a very smart. He's he's brilliant, right? And is that that brilliance does not mean a good guy, right? <clears throat> Sorry, that might be my tuberculosis acting up. I'm always out with these aliens coming through the Darien Gap. <laughs> I hope Michael, I anything else you want to say before we wrap it up? I mean, I know there's probably a lot on your mind. I guess big picture, like what are you any any <laughs> stuff moving ahead? And everybody should go to Michael's. I'll pull up your locals so that um, people can support you there. But what are you looking in the days ahead? What are you planning to do? 
Uh, from here, I'm not sure where I'm going to go next. Uh, I may go back to Hungary and check out the situation there more, uh, and also up to Lithuania. <clears throat> I'm not sure if I'll go into Ukraine. I want to preserve my life at this point because that war is not worth risk. You know, I spent years in the wars, and I don't do it for fun. Uh, you know, people often said I'm crazy because of all the you know crazy firefights and all that stuff that I was in, but I'm not. I'm actually very not <laughs> very cautious. Uh, with what I do. That's why I just survived down in Darien Gap for so long. But so I probably won't be going into Ukraine. I may uh, after I look at it, the situation, but I'm more interested in food supply. I'm very interested in food supply because food supply is more short. There is no question about it. It doesn't matter if we suddenly have the best leadership in the world. We don't have a magic wand and uh, or magic crops or magic beans. The bottom line is a lot of people are about to starve to death. And those actually in famines, often the, the larger death toll is actually from disease. Right. Uh, and not, not always, but often it's from disease. Uh, and then, of course, wars, because pandemic and famine create war. Right. So we'll get wars. We're going to get wars. That's just it's just the way it goes. You know, it's funny. I, I've been saying this for years. And uh, and and at one point, a, a lady said, well, you act like you made all this up yourself. It's in the Bible. You know, the pandemic and famine and war go together. And I was like, yeah, it is. I mean, <laughs> if they knew it 2000 years ago, I mean, they, the, those, the four horsemen ride together. Right. And so uh, they do. I mean, and there's reasons for that. For instance, um, uh, often with pandemic, uh, you know, for instance, let's say the 1793 yellow fever outbreak in Philadelphia, uh, farmers were leaving the fields. Nobody knew it was, the vector was mosquitoes back then. It, it wasn't. It was. It was another uh, 1793. It was another more than a hundred years before before mosquitoes were suspected. And the first people that there was that Cuban doctor. What was his name? And you know, and, and people were saying, you know, I think it might be those mosquitoes. Mosquitoes? Are you crazy? You know, and so, but uh, you know, and yellow fever is a man-sized pandemic. And I, it, it affected the the United States more than most of the wars we've been in, and most people don't even realize it. Is the, the yellow fever is one of the reasons we ended up with so many African slaves? People don't realize that, or how we got the Louisiana Purchase was largely due to yellow fever. So I mean, these pandemics affect massive amounts of things that unfold and they create famines. Famine creates pandemic. Pandemic creates famine. Famine creates famine. And they all create war. And war creates the other two. So you get that that thing and then you, you know, uh, that dynamic. And then you get the human osmotic pressure, the push and pull of migration, which can be, you know, quite epic. And this all and then finally how does it end? It ends with you reach some sort of equilibrium. A lot of people are dead. Now there's enough food because there's less people that need to eat and uh, people are exhausted for more and the disease has run its course. And then everybody goes, whoo, those people were stupid. We'd never do something that stupid. And then the, less, and the lesson of history is, yes, you will, because most of the people don't pay attention to it. And then it happens again. So you can study these things. You can read tons of books on pandemic and famine. I just finished my 18th book on famine uh, and you could add more to that if you included uh, I don't know, Where Money Dies is a good book. I didn't expect Where Money Dies to be about famine. I guess you could add that one to the list, 19. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Where Money Dies is a good book. I suggest people read Where Money Dies. I suggest people read Red Famine, Mao's Great Famine, and first and foremost, Rape of the Mind. Read Rape of the Mind. When you read Rape of the Mind, that's your arithmetic for learning algebra later, right? Read Rape of the Mind, 1956. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I honestly, Michael, I, I, I'm sure you of of among, um, uh, you know, very, I don't want to say very few people, but there there are the people on, I think, this that would agree with you. I would have I would assume have no problem with people going out and trying to like fact check or disagree or have a conversation. And I think I think what you were saying earlier about how to to sort of sort through some of this stuff. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Go question Michael. Question everybody. That that's of course. Want, you know, we want that kind of thing. 
you should look at the reason that we have issues is not because Michael's controlling the narrative. It's because YouTube is controlling there. I like, we can't talk about this stuff because if you, so if you think, you know, it's just, it, it's, it's just interesting to me. And, and like, this is, you know, Bill Gates, like th- I just brought this up as like one final thing because I, you know, when I went from TV corporate TV reporter in Seattle, <clears throat> excuse me, like, you know, Bill Gates was like an untouchable. If you went and interviewed him, he got very, very easy questions, softballs thrown at him all the time. And, and often it was framed like, you know, if you questioned the guy, you were a conspiracy theorist, but there's plenty of news, even in mainstream outlets, like Scientific American of, of the folks that Bill Gates is trying to help saying they don't want him there. They don't want his ideas. They don't want his GMO foods. They don't want him coming over. And wait, wait, let me ask you something. Now. Let me ask you something. Let me yeah. ask you something. Scientific American. Uh, can you clarify that? What, 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 what were they saying? Well, it's just an article from a year ago talking about Bill Gates should stop telling Africans what kind of agriculture Africans need. And there are a lot, a lot of, you know, communities that have been, part of the gates effort to like make things better for them that are like we don't we don't want you to make things better for us but often when bill gates is discussed by sort of the mainstream it's like he's he's you know the red carpet is rolled out for him he's he goes all over mainstream news and talks about he's got charities and just helping the world and when i went from being this corporate reporter who saw how he was he was uh, treated in mainstream news and, and really had very few questions about him. And they got in the world where I am, where I just start talking to censored people. And I'm like, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. And you start looking it up and you're like, oh, yeah, there are a lot of people who are done with Bill Gates, you know, that are the part of the, the communities that allegedly he's helping. But because he's got charities and he gives money and he's trying to help with food, it's like you can't question the guy. And I'll never forget, you know, one <laughs> one person telling me. All I was doing was just asking, like, why is this the guy we're listening to at the beginning of the pandemic when it comes to, um, you know, the the science behind these vaccines or behind the pandemic itself or whatever else? It will be, how could you question him? Because he's been in global health forever. I mean, the guys are trying to help everybody. Like, if you don't like him, you're just an ingrate. You're, you know, if you think that, I'm sorry. Like, I used I used to be in the world where I didn't question this stuff, but it's so ignorant because you don't have to go too far, even in the mainstream world to see that there are lots of communities, a lots of countries, you know, farmers in Africa, for instance, um, in continents like Africa, where, you know, it's like, oh, the poor, these poor people, they just need our, they need our help. They need us to feed them. How how will these savages be able to make it without us? Who are like, you know what? We're fine. We don't, we don't want you experimenting on us anymore. We don't want your, your foods. Any, we don't want your GMOs. We don't want your agriculture. We just want you to leave us alone. And I, I think, you know, I'm not doing this to just call up Bill Gates specifically. I'm saying this because I think it's important to understand that, uh, like we were saying earlier, a lot of times I believe, this is my opinion, that that debate and discussion is squashed in the name of like, you're questioning the good guys. Like you're questioning the people who are trying to help. You're all these things. And it's like, yeah, okay, those people may think they're trying to help, but go, but go look and see what are they really doing? And are the people they're trying to help, do they want the help? Like, do they feel like it's really helping them? And just get, just, just, just look into that. Because if you're just buying into a narrative that's been fed as if it's like, this is just trying to help. You know, the person's got lots of money. They're giving away lots of money. It's altruism. And that's, that's, that's your, that's, that's your, I guess, uh, filter for what is good is like the idea of altruism. That's why I brought it up earlier because a lot of bad stuff has been done in the name of altruism. And there's, I, in my opinion, like there are plenty of people who have pushed back over the years, but that you just don't often hear about it. Um, you know, on the altruism of the Gates Foundation. And I just want to bring that up because I think I think people should be aware of that and should be should be critical when you're just told you should shut up and, and stop questioning because of altruism, because we're just here to help you because it's public health policy or because it's charity or because we're helping you with food or whatever, like really look into it. And I can assure you that Michael has no problem with you looking into what he's talking about. And let us you know. I, 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 I want you to. Yeah. Ex- so anyway, Michael, I appreciate it as always. Thanks yeah. for coming but on. People, uh, everybody go uh, let to... me say something. Yeah, Just, please. I'm glad that they're doing this, be- you know, quashing down on journalists like you, because now you're free. Because now when I watch your program, you're able to say what you want to say, except for YouTube. You got to get some private thing. You can really let it out. When I talked to Laura Logan, you know, Laura, Laura, Michael, listen to me. They're going to, you know, 
I love freaking Thanos. love your Laura Logan impersonation. I love she's, Laura, man. She's like, Michael, <laughs> shut up. I'm talking. And then I, I'm like, eh, what are you talking about? And so, but I mean, she sees it very clearly. I and mean, she got fired or let go from Fox or whatever. Uh, I was like, that's the best thing ever. She's dangerous when she's not captive to them, right? She's brilliant. Like, you. I mean, it's unbelievable. You, you guys are better off for us when you're not with that behind those walls i mean now you're out you're a free range tiger now i mean you can say what you want to say can't say what you want to say here you're gonna have to do it offline somehow okay well i appreciate it i i should say i totally forgot to put the chat on subscriber mode only so i just want to let everybody know if you're watching on youtube um i'm switching over to doing that because a lot of other people have so you have to be a subscriber of the channel because i'm um Something's happening to my YouTube channel. I'm not totally sure what it is. I don't think I'm the only person that's that's having to deal with it, but I'm trying to figure out why people are getting unsubscribed. I get these comments constantly from people that you're unsubscribed. So double check and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I'm going to try to be remembering to put it on subscriber only for the chat, just so that people can see, you know, you try to put in a comment and you're like, oh, I'm unsubscribed. I got to resubscribe. So just be aware, check and make sure you're subscribed. Uh, MichaelYon.Locals.com. And uh, if things... Uh, change over there, escalate, or even maybe, I don't know, Michael, you, you, you end up having to get into a hot tub or something at one of these distribution centers. We'll have you back on. You can show us what's going on, but I always appreciate Here I am, celebrity hot tub. <laughs> You're looking for it. Okay. Bye everybody. Thanks again. Oh, and don't forget Bye, to go to alexmorrow.locals.com too. And you'll get exclusive content over there as well. Both Michael and I are on there. Thank you. Bye. Happy four. Bye, Allison.